Welcome back. My name is Dr. Ruth Williams, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Glaucoma Research Foundation's second annual Glaucoma Patient Summit. We would like to thank Allergan, our presenting sponsor, for their leadership support of this event. As a glaucoma specialist, I'm grateful to have many options to help patients manage their disease. Having new and effective treatments and diagnostic tools are the direct result of years and years of dedicated research. While today's summit focuses on patient education, we also wanted to provide an update on promising research programs that provide hope for a future free from glaucoma. Dr. Jeffrey Goldberg will now highlight some of the most encouraging initiatives in glaucoma research. Dr. Goldberg received his Bachelor of Science degree from Yale University and his medical degree and PhD from Stanford University. He did his clinical training in ophthalmology and then in glaucoma at the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute. He is currently professor and chair of ophthalmology at the Byers Eye Institute at Stanford University. Dr. Goldberg was a principal investigator of Glaucoma Research Foundation's Catalyst for a Cure biomarker initiative and now serves as a scientific advisor to the newest Catalyst for a Cure consortium focused on vision restoration. Please welcome Dr. Jeffrey Goldberg. Well, thanks very much to the Glaucoma Research Foundation. It's a real pleasure to participate in the Patient Summit. And they've asked me to talk about some of the promising research that we have on the horizon, and particularly about the path to a cure. As we all have learned now, retinal ganglion cells and their fibers, their axons in the optic nerve are what degenerate in glaucoma. And that's really what we need our uh, new therapies to address is that degeneration. And in particular, the issue is that there's no retinal ganglion cell neuronal regeneration or replacement as these cells degenerate after optic nerve injury as occurs in glaucoma. And so we have a number of unmet needs in glaucoma. Of course, we are always looking for better ways to lower eye pressure, but I wanna focus on two even greater unmet needs. And the first is a need for better biomarkers or ways to measure the disease. Um, and then we'll come to the better treatments as well. So we really need better ways to measure the risk a patient will have, uh, the diagnosis, do they have glaucoma? Um, what's the risk of progression? Are they going to get worse? We need better ways to predict and, and therefore then to prevent these in their patients. And I was really privileged to be funded by the Glaucoma Research Foundation, which brought together the Catalyst for Cure Bio and Biomarker Initiative starting in 2012. And this really brought together scientists with expertise in advanced imaging and neurobiology of the eye and optic nerve, as, as well as bringing clinical ophthalmology knowledge to the table. And my collaborators, Alf Dubra, Andy Huberman, and Vivek Srinivasan are all pictured here. It was a fantastically productive period, I think, for all of us. And, and we're all very grateful to the Glaucoma Research Foundation for that. The real question that we wanted to address in this biomarker initiative was, how do we measure disease before it's too late? You know, we have ways of measuring glaucoma right now, like visual field testing and looking at the optic nerve and even measuring the nerve fiber layer thinning. But what we're really after is something really much earlier that lets us detect much, much sooner in the disease course. You know, for example, looking at loss of metabolic function and being able to tell perhaps if your retinal ganglion cells are, are sick, but not yet dead. Uh, Alf Dubro, using a really amazing technology called adaptive optics, figured out how to non-invasively image all the different parts of the retinal ganglion cells in human patients. This is non-invasive imaging in vivo uh, in, in the living patients. Here's some of his pictures imaging the axon fibers coursing across the surface of the retina and the, the little moving flickering lines that you see. Those are the tiniest little blood vessels and capillaries that are feeding the axons of the retinal ganglion cells and being able to to peer into the human retina with this level of resolution. It's just, it's unprecedented in really opening up new venues, new ways to look at, at disease. Andy Huberman discovered, among others, in, in animal models of glaucoma, 
that actually it's a subtype. It's one type of retinal ganglion cells called off retinal ganglion cells that appear to retract their dendrites, their sensors in the retina first in, in response to a glaucomatous insult. And Vivek Srinivasan in our group took advantage of this information to develop some high definition retinal imaging using OCT and in fact, using visible light OCT to image what's called the inner plexiform layer of the retina. That's where the retinal ganglion cell dendrites live. And uh, we're now starting to measure this in uh, move to measuring this in glaucoma patients to see if this could be a really amazing new biomarker for glaucomatous progression. Working with Tony Norsha, a professor in the psychology department at Stanford, uh, he's actually pictured here wearing this, this hairnet of recording electrodes. It allows us to do what's called a visually evoked potential. And this is a new kind of visual field test where we're actually measuring the different subtypes of retinal ganglion cells in human patients, in our, in our glaucoma patients, not just in animals anymore. And uh, this has been a really amazing step forward. And we've already made some really neat progress um, uh, in this collaboration. What we found is that the visually evoked potential can differentiate between the retinal ganglion cells and visual pathways that are dedicated to to telling you when the lights turn on versus the ones that are in charge of telling you when the lights turn off. And it turns out that normal people uh, who don't have glaucoma have a faster response to the turning off of a light than to turning on. It's called an off biased response. But it turns out that that off biased response is lost in glaucoma patients. And this is very exciting because this could be both a really early marker, but also a really sensitive marker for glaucoma progression. And again, our ability to predict glaucoma progression, it's so important right now. So we're implementing these technologies now in our glaucoma patients at Stanford and offering to, to any of our patients who come see us at Stanford, if they wanna get some of this advanced imaging and advanced measurement of their glaucoma function, um, these are some of the new tests that we can give them. Now, the other thing that these new tests are allowing us to do is do a better job evaluating new treatments. And in particular, we, we, have, a new, we have a particular need for better treatments that go beyond eye pressure, beyond IOP. And these are called neuroprotection, which means how do we keep the retinal ganglion cells alive, even in the face of the insult of glaucoma and, and, and the associated pressure, et cetera? So that's neuroprotection. Regeneration is if we've injured the optic nerve, how do we get that to regrow or even replace the optic nerve and the retinal ganglion cells, for example, with stem cells to replace those cells that have died off in the disease? And finally, a new concept that we've really been trying to bring to the fore is, is that of neuroenhancement. How do we develop treatments that take your sick retinal ganglion cells and give them a booster shot so that they could function better and, 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 and restore and protect your vision that way? And we know that there's a window of opportunity in our human patients with glaucoma in between injury and cell death that we could give such neuroenhancing or neuroprotective treatments. So for example, the eye pressure is raised early in the disease. And then there's all sorts of metabolic dysregulation happening in the retinal ganglion cells and their axons and dendrites. The axon actually gets physically damaged at some point. It's only much later that the retinal ganglion cells actually die in glaucoma. And so that's our window in between injury and death to give neuroprotective or neuroenhancing treatments, or after retinal ganglion cells die, perhaps stem cell therapies to replace those missing ganglion cells. Now the Glaucoma Research Foundation has launched this next generation catalyst for a cure called their Vision Restoration Initiative. And for this, they've brought together four new scientists to collaborate together. And uh, they're shown here, and I'll just briefly introduce the amazing work that these four are doing. 
now that they're funded by the Glaucoma Research Foundation. Yang Hu, who's an assistant professor in, in my department of the ophthalmology department at Stanford, has developed an animal model that more closely mimics human glaucoma, both the rise in pressure, but also the ability to lower pressure. And even when you lower pressure, you still see damage. And boy, don't we have a lot of patients who have that issue uh, even today. And, uh, and here in the left, some of these uh, red dots, these are the retinal ganglion cells in mice that are degenerating in this glaucoma mouse model compared to all the numbers that are there in the normal mouse. And this is really opening up unprecedented opportunities to develop the new treatments for glaucoma and test them in animals before we test them in people. Xin Duan is an assistant professor in the Department of Ophthalmology um, at UCSF, and he's doing amazing work identifying the regenerative factors for the different subtypes of retinal ganglion cells. And I mentioned that we're already detecting that in human patients with glaucoma, different retinal ganglion cell subtypes seem to die off or, or degenerate first in the disease and others later in the disease and identifying the differences, the molecular differences between these retinal ganglion cell subtypes, and in particular, how they respond to disease and how they respond to, to candidate therapies is a focal point that uh, Jin Duan is able to bring to this collaboration. Derek Wellsby is assistant professor of ophthalmology at UC San Diego, and he's really focused on identifying new genes and new drugs for the survival and regeneration of retinal ganglion cells. And some of his work is really exciting because it's drawing blood from patients and collecting their cells and turning them into stem cells that he can then screen for new drugs and genes that can both on the bottom left present, prevent retinal ganglion cells from dying and in the top right help regenerate their, their nerve fibers into the optic nerve. Uh, these are in animal models, and then we'll be excited to move these into human testing. And finally, Anna Latore is an associate professor in cell biology and anatomy at UC Davis. And she's doing amazing work turning stem cells, human stem cells, into human retinal ganglion cells. And they uh, express all the markers of retinal ganglion cells that we expect, expect, uh, expect to see, which are shown here with these delightful colors, uh, fluorescent proteins. And, um, and she's transplanting these again into animal models to test these for integration into the retina uh, and see whether they'll work in these glaucoma models collaborating with her collaborators here, all funded through this Glaucoma Research Foundation Catalyst for Cure. Very exciting work, couldn't be more excited. It's a, a pleasure for me to get to serve on a, the scientific advisory board to help um, help however we can. So finally, how do we bring this all into human testing? Well, the old thinking was that this would be, never would be possible in glaucoma patients because it would take so long to measure neuroprotection treatments in human patients. But now we've improved so much of the trial design through some of our recent studies that we really understand that First of all, it's not so long. We can do a neuroprotection study in 12 to 18 months. And in part that's facilitated by selecting rapidly progressing patients and clustering the visual field testing to hedge against variability in the testing. We can also do short-term studies for neuroenhancement. Again, that's to improve the function of sick but not yet dead retinal ganglion cells. And for both of these works, incorporating these new exploratory biomarkers, which is really exciting. We did a phase one trial for CNTF. CNTF is a neurotrophic factor. It's a protein that can greatly help the survival and regeneration of retinal ganglion cells in mice and rats and monkeys. And now we're testing it in humans finally. Uh, we're testing it using this implant that goes inside the eye in a quick little surgery uh, and it makes CNTF inside the eye for years, maybe indefinitely. 
In the first trial, we showed that it thickened up the retina, improved the nerve fiber layer, and showed some improvement in the visual field of the patient. So we could see that improvement very quickly within one to three months. So very exciting early data uh, that really showed that this was having biological activity inside the eye. That led us on to um, a phase two study, which we're in the middle of right now. Here's an example patient who presented with foggy vision, you know, very advanced glaucoma. And uh, the left eye got implanted with one of these CNTF implants. And whereas normally the nerve fiber layer on an OCT degenerates, the left eye showed a thickening, like a regenerative growth or a, or a uh, hypertrophy, we would say, of the nerve fiber layer. And similarly, in the visual field, which as everyone in this audience knows, just declines uh, in glaucoma over time. That's, the, that's our big challenge. But here, the left eye actually showed improvement in the visual field after the implant was put in. And so that's very exciting sort of titillating data. And so, as I said, we're in the middle of this phase two randomized trial. It's a multi-center study with foundation and philanthropy funding, keeping it going. We we're also testing other new therapies. There's a, a new antibody therapy that protects the optic nerve. It's called um, ANX007. And uh, we've just completed a phase 1B randomized control trial uh, of this same drug in our human patients. And we were able to show that by one month, it completely blocked this bad protein that it's supposed to block called C1Q completely blocked it by a month later. And so very exciting showing that this antibody is working biologically, and now we'll get ready to test it in human patients with eye diseases going forward. So we're doing a lot of clinical trials with patients at Stanford. We've completed a couple of trials on nerve growth factor, and I just mentioned that anti-C1Q antibody. We've got a couple of trials in progress, a virtual reality trial using visual stimulation and the CNTF trial that I mentioned before, we're getting ready to start even more trials for our glaucoma patients at Stanford, looking at extra oxygen. We're trying to get an international trial set up on vitamin B3, and we have other trials coming up the pipeline. So it's a very exciting period. We're definitely on the right path here. We've shown now that neuroprotection and neuroenhancement therapeutic candidates can be studied in our glaucoma pa patients. And we're now merging this therapeutic testing with this biomarker exploratory endpoints to cross-validate. And I think that vision protection and vision restoration in glaucoma with all of this testing is very much in our sights. So with that, thanks very much for your attention and definitely enjoy the day. Thank you, Jeff. We are so encouraged with the progress of glaucoma research. Thank you for your ongoing dedication to helping patients. Oh,